and Tarni Shrubs. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe, thank you for reading it so nicely and such a beautiful quote. We all go through this, all kind of thoughts come to us and we have to figure out a way of managing it like Swamiji is telling us in the quote. So we have a few minutes in hand. Shardaji, anything else that we wanted to announce before checking with everybody? Uh, nothing uh, from my side, uh, Smita Ji. So maybe we can go over the questions, questions if we have time. Like Today's okay. light, right? Um, let's check whether we had a quiz on that one or not. Prabhaji, would you be able to check for us? Okay, I'm checking. Thank you. Well, we are waiting for that. I uh, just wanted to check with everybody that everybody is benefiting from the satsang. Uh, what you are coming in here for, you are finding it, you are liking the kirtans, uh, the sadhana time that you are able to manage through the satsang, artis, kirtan, discourse, this all takes us through that day's needed quality time with God. That's how, and because this is daily, it is... Uh, if we put it on our calendar, it's happening for us, right? Every day we think of all these things which we get to hear and learn. And that is uh, the thought behind this satsang. Hopefully it is working for everybody. If you all have any feedback, any questions or any other um, things that you would like to hear more uh, from Swamiji in this satsang, Please get back to us through the attendance tracker and the feedback tracker. We'll be able to look through and go with that. We have a minute in hand and we have few true and false questions. But we also have the answer right away in here. But that's fine. Revisions are always a good thing. So the first question here is, we can know God by our intellect. And uh, because the answer is here, I, I think... Uh, Samji, is your hand raised from the previous quote for the day reading or are you raising for this one? Thank you, the hand uh, got lowered. All right. So I will go ahead and read the answer because it's over there. So we know that we can know God by our intellect. That's not true. Intellect has its limitation. God cannot be explained by using words. Again, it is materialistic. The words is materialistic in nature. It's not divine. So we do not have enough words to explain God. We can attain God realization if we attend spiritual discourses. Spiritual discourses are very good. We should attend those. It, it, it's a tool for us to get there slowly, but it is not the only way it's not the way to get attain god realization so this statement is false hopefully i just gave us one more round of revision so with that we are at time also the next satsang is for sanskrit learning hope uh, everybody who wants to attend that one is already here so we pay our gratitude at the lotus feet of hari and guru and we thank you all for being part of the satsang with us please have a great rest of the day and evening. We'll see you all tomorrow. Radhe Radhe. Different language, but also different dialects as well. Every 10 kilometers, the language changes. So which language does God talk to us in? And what we should be asking God as well. This is what we're going to talk about. And from tomorrow, we will get started with the concept of you know, the different manifestations of God, whether God is form, has a form or is formless and all those deeper details around that topic. So again, welcome to all of you. Let's get started by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. I'm going to share my screen. Maybe, maybe, maybe the co-host, please. Maybe the host, please. I'll make the co-host. Okay, sure. I'll make you the host. Yeah. No worries. Give me a sec. Thank you so much. Yeah. You need host privileges? Yes. Thank you so much. I'll make you the host. All right. 
I've changed the host. You have to make me the co-host so that I can yes, share. I will. Yes, sure. One second, yeah. I need to get privileged to host. Uh, I think now Aarti is the Aarti ji is the host, so she has to make you the co-host. Yeah, I am not the host. I can't. Oh, sorry. I think with Aarti, you know wrong. how to do that. I think I accidentally did Aarti instead of Shyam ji. No worries. Yeah. Aarti ji, can you put put the host back? You need to go right click and then. Aarti ji, are you there? Aarti ji, Radhe Radhe. Aarti ji. Aarti ji, can you hear me? Okay, this is not ideal then. You can't make me co-host, uh, Shamji. Aarti ji, can you make me co-host or we'll have you to can't make, make you co this whole thing now? Aarti ji, can you hear me? Aarti ji, are you there? Aarti ji, are you there? She can't, she's not able. I can't make you the co-host. I am the whole co-host. Okay, Rahul, can we call uh, somebody to that? Aarti ji, if you are there, you need to change the host to Shyam ji or myself. Aarti ji, can you hear me? I just called Amrita Vani ji. She, she will be joining Sonia to make you the host. Okay. Thank you, Rahul. I don't think so. Aarti ji is audible or yeah, we are not able to hear them. Yeah, down with stomach flu. Anyways, so while we are waiting for Ramutavani ji to join, let's get started. Actually, we had a big tragedy here um, at uh, uh, near to Allen. It's a lot of excruciating pain and uh, that uh, people are going through. Some are struggling for their life and I think there were eight or nine lives lost. Uh, we all would have heard. So. Before we do our Guru uh, prayer, invoke the blessings of God and Guru. Let's do a quick peace prayer and then we will get started. <laughs> Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Makaschituk Bhagbhavet Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti. All right. Uh, Amrita Maniji is there? Yes, I think Nitinji, now you are the co host there. Yeah, so, you should Good. so let me share my screen and we'll get started. Sorry about minor technical glitch that we had. I hope you're able to see my screen now. G. Great. So, we'll get started by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Par Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru E Namaha, Vasudeva Sutam Devam, Kamsa Chanuram Ardhanam, Devaki Paramanandam, Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum, Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum. All right. So, Radha Radha, good morning, good evening again, all of you. So, we did the peace prayer. Um, we'll keep our, you know, the people who are struggling right now in our prayers and pray to God to give them strength to sail through this unprecedented uh, incident that happened. So, let's move on. So this week, we are talking about the topic of God, right? We are going to touch upon a lot of concepts related to God. Who is God? What do our scriptures tell us about God? And uh, the formless form aspect of God. How do we communicate with God? And what is it that we should be asking God? So we'll cover all the concepts. So as part of the series, we are, we are going to go back and forth across Bhagavad Gita. Not in the sequence. We are currently in te technically in chapter 4. However, we'll go back and forth to take our discussion forward. So I'll be picking up shlokas. Today I picked up 14.26. I'll recite it and then you're welcome to follow along. Macha yogya abhichare bhakti yogena sevate 
सगुणान समतेतान ब्रह्म भूयाय कल्पते All right. Do we have any volunteers? I'll take a few hands. Sam ji, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Maam cha yo avya bichare na bhakti yoge na sevate sagunan samati tyaitan brahma bhuya ya kalpate. Very nice. Thank you, Sam. Okay, let's pick up a few more hands. Vina ji, Radhe Radhe. भक्ति सागुनान भूया कल्पते चारेण भक्ति योगे न सेवते सगुणान समतीतान ब्रह्म भूयाय कल्पते राधे 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 ओके विल टेक थ्री मोर हैंड्स रियल क्विक एंड देन विल गेट स्टार्टेड अपर्णा जी राधे 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 अपर्णा जी राधे राधे व्यभिचारेण भक्ति योगे न सेवते सगुणान समतीतान ब्रह्म भूयाय कल्पते योगे न सेवते सगुणान समतीतान ब्रह्म भूयाय कल्पते हरि ओम नितिन जी हरि ओम एवरी वन मां चोग्यभिचारेण भक्ति योगे न सेवते सगुणान समतीतान ब्रह्म भूयाय कल्पते राधे राधे सोमजी प्रसि वन मोर हैंड ओके गुरुजी लास्ट वन विकमार जी राधे राधे विल मेक एन एक्सेप्शन राधे राधे मां च यो विविचारेण भक्ति योगे न सेवते कमिंग Let's get started with what we have today. What we are going to talk about, what we should be asking for God, and all that stuff. So today's topic, if you look at it, this is what we are going to talk about today. These are the special sessions that we are having. So, what is the language we need to learn to communicate with God, and what should we ask from God? Okay, this is the topic we are going to discuss. And you see, so many languages are there in the world, and there are so many dialects. Um, in fact, it said in India, with every ten kilometers, the water changes and the vani also, the dialect also changes. now which language would god prefer is the question right we know sanskrit is a dev bhasha and then at the same time we have so many languages so let's get started so let's do a quick recap what we spoke about ved vyas in the very first vedant sutra he says adhato brahm jigyasa now that you are born as a human inquire you know who is god that is the first sutra he has written that we spoke about yesterday and furthermore in the very second sutra he says janmade asya yata the one who created this world is god okay we spoke about this topic yesterday that god created this world and we get a human birth in due course of time it's not like human birth is something as a sense of entitlement we can get always once human always humans right some traditions say that story doesn't work that way we rotate in 8.4 million and then god knows when to make us human and then if we fritter away our life doing the basic activities that even animals do in a deluxe way then there's no guarantee we'll get human birth again 
unless we go through that 8.4 million cycle again. So that is what we spoke about yesterday. Now, we also spoke about the things that attract us in this material world. Right? Somebody who's beautiful is called Sondaryavan. Somebody who's knowledgeable is called Buddhiman. And similarly, what is Bhagwan? We spoke about that. All the things that actually attract us in this world, beauty, knowledge, strength, wealth, fame, renunciation. People have it in finite quality and that too temporarily. And the one who has it permanently and that too in infinite extent is called God. Okay, That is the definition of God. All qualities in full and unlimited. Also, our scriptures say there are two definitions of God. He is called Vrihatvat. Vrihatvat means one who is infinitely big. Who is infinitely big. And Brihan, Brihanavat, Brihanatvat. One who makes others big. So he is not only infinitely big, but he has the ability to make others big as well. So when the God realization happens, he actually gives everything that he has to the realized soul. Everything. So when you become God realized, you become like God. Other than, of course, taking care of those, you know, logs, backlog, karmas and all that dirty bookkeeping work God keeps with himself. But he gives you all of his powers. And he's called smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest. Because he's holding this entire creation, just like a bird would hold something in its beak. And also he's permeated every atom of this universe. So he's smaller than the smallest. He's permeated our soul as well. And pretty much everything in out there in this universe. All right, so now we move on to the topic of today's discussion. Okay, it's going to be an interesting, engaging discussion. Let's talk about it. I want you to wear your thinking caps on and we'll make it a little interactive today. Okay, now, oops, sorry, this thing is already here. Okay, this is the Agarbatti, right? The Agarbatti we put in on our altar. So, what is our understanding of God? Let's start with that. Mostly, if you see in Indian households, God is in your altar, you would see all these things, right? Some or all of them. Ganesha, Durga, Lord Shiva, Lord Rama, Lord Krishna. You would put all of them in the altar and then do these parties, right? Three times usually. So basically, for us, the concept of God is somebody who resides in temple or you put it in your altar and then do the puja. So it's kind of a understanding where it's a perfect insurance policy kind of a deal. We don't know, right? I mean, God there, who knows? But then at least we are hedging our bets, right? If God Ganesha doesn't listen, maybe Madurga would. If Madurga doesn't listen, maybe Lord Shiva would. And kind of a thing. So we do a little bit of devotion to everyone. And in fact, you would come across a lot of people um, when this concept that we're going to talk about is not clear, they feel guilty as well. You know, I have worshipped one and not other. And some, of course, worship the Nirakar aspect of God as well. We're going to talk about that as well. But the point here is, that is something related to, okay, some self-interest is there in our mind that we are trying to safeguard. And then we hedge our bets, thinking one of them will take care of it. Or we think God is somebody who's seated or maybe watching us from far above and maybe cracking a whip when needed to, uh, you know, uh, like people say that God is watching and he's going to, some people are God fearing. So they think God is sitting somewhere far above in seventh heaven and watching us from there. That is also a concept of God, right? This is the usual concept of God that we come across while we are growing up. And all the different gods that we see, that is why Hinduism, one of the things with Sanatana Dharam that they say is polytheism which we are going to put it in perspective as well during the course of our discussion. And uh, worship God, especially before exams or to undertake something big, if you're going to buy, sell a property or taking on an auspicious task, Lord Ganesha comes into picture um, and the other things, right, that we have in our mind, our wish list or the bucket list that we have in our mind, we, go, we approach God for that. So this is typically how it goes. Now let's move on. Um, Let's talk about a story, okay? Quick, not story, but an example. He's a beggar. You see, he's a beggar. Now, beggar, somebody, instead of giving him money, somebody gives him a lottery ticket. And he hits a jackpot. Like American Lotto or something like that. 
So this beggar, he gets a lottery ticket and hits a lottery uh, jackpot. Now on being asked, what are you going to do now when, now that you have hit a lottery? So he says, I'm going to buy a Rolls Royce and beg around in a Rolls Royce now. So that is what a beggar, beggar's plan is after hitting a lottery. So anyone of you thinks it is uh, ridiculous, you know, the suggestion that he gave? Any remarks, thoughts that come to your mind on hearing this plan of the beggar? Anybody? Nobody's raising hand today. Okay, yes, Rahul. Rahul, bhai. Radhe, Radhe. Yeah. yeah, so the, the beggar will continue to do begging only in a royal way. So that is what his plan is. Awesome plan. Right. Yeah, because that is as far as its intellect mm -hmm. go. Very true. Yes, Meena ji, you wanted to add something? Yeah, he's he's like he's unintelligent. He's in that ignorance. He doesn't know. Yeah. It's like <laughs> what what ridiculous stuff are you talking? He's super unintelligent, right? <laughs> now, now let me tell you, you found it ridiculous, right? We are same as this beggar. Okay, now I'll tell you why or how. Let's look at it. Now there's a boy who goes to a jewelry store. Okay. And there he sees her. She's you see this chocolate somewhere falling there? Which one do you think you would settle for? Anybody? I mean, it's a pretty straight chocolate. question. Chocolate in the world. Okay, that's yes, what sir. he wants. Chocolate. That's what he wants. His so, mind let goes so, there only. Yeah, so he'll settle for chocolate. We know that, right? Because that is how far an intellect of a kid would go. For its chocolate is going to give gratification and it's a lot of fun eating chocolate. Who cares about what these shiny things are out there, right? So same thing, like this beggar or this boy is the story of our life, okay? It may be a hard swill to pal, uh, you know, pill to swallow, but this is how who we are, what we do. And I'll tell you how. Okay, so this story, this seemed pretty ridiculous, right? What, what, do, what do these both settle there, settling down for with the opportunities that are opened up for them? Uh, but then this is pretty much the story of our life. Now, how is it the story of our life? I'll tell you. So, Madhurga is there. You see the Madhurga? Right? Now, let's say somebody bows and then Lord Hanuman is there as well. A lot of people would be worshipping Mother Durga and Hanuman Ji. We know, right? People do worship. They are Ishtadev for them. So, okay, let me just go back here. Okay, keep this picture in your mind, right? Beggar has gotten a lottery and what he's asked for. And this kid has pretty much all the precious stones at his disposal, but he's settling down for a candy or a chocolate. Now, let's see what happens in our life, right? A lot of people go to Vishnu Devi and then Hanumanji's bhakts are there as well, right? And let's say somebody's begging or bound down in front of Hanumanji. And what is he asking for? I need a green card, okay? And it could be a wife also. Interestingly, most of the brahmacharis, they approach Bhanuanji only. Okay. I need a green card. I need a wife. I need this. I need that. I need that. Right. This is how it goes. Ma Durga, when you go, you say, Durga Mata, if my child gets fine, I will offer bhog. So this is the kind of things we usually approach God with. Now, when you offer bhog, you put a condition, if my child gets fine. In world, if you have to give him somebody speed money or bribe somebody, we give 50% advance. Right. Here we say, you first get it right, then I'll do, otherwise I'll lose both. So the point is, we are asking for trinkets while there's a possibility we could ask for more. A lot of people will say that, you know what, Hanumanji actually listens to me. I have seen so many times, he, he listens to my requests and my prayers and gives me what I'm asking for. So let's say hypothetically, that is the case. It happens. It can happen, right? Maybe because of your prarabdha or otherwise, you would have been getting something. But if you have a strong reason to believe Hanumanji listens to you, then why not ask for, how can I meet Ram? We don't ask for that. Okay, now this is what is selecting that chocolate or choosing, continuing to choose to beg as opposed to asking for something which is worthwhile, truly worthwhile. Same thing we do. We do the transaction with God also. I need this, I need that and that's all. We don't ask for something far superior because that is how far our intellect goes. Because not very rarely we come across 
you know, Swamiji Maharajji or get this knowledge. And that is how at least, you know, our upbringing was, mine at least was, and most of us would be able to relate to it, I would imagine. Now, on what basis do we ask? Is there a basis for asking things? See, it's like when you're going on a road and somebody puts a, can I get a lift and you will be in US and you India, you might even think about it here. We will say, okay, do I even know you kind of a deal? On what basis do we ask? We have not even established a basis of relationship and we keep on asking without any basis. Okay, so that is another thing that we need to, needs to be thought about as well. So here's a guy who had actually climbed the coconut tree because he was feeling very, very thirsty. He was feeling very thirsty. So he said, okay, let me climb up and uh, get some coconut for to quench my thirst. So he got up, he got the coconut and threw it down that, okay, I'm going to come down and then eat and drink the coconut water to quench my thirst. Getting up is easy. Getting down is, you know, vertigo, height, hovia and all that stuff comes into picture. Now the fun starts. He's... Lord Shiva's bhakt and he says, you know what, Lord Shiva, I can't see down and I'm scared. If you support me, what I'll do is I'm going to feed 100 Brahmins if you get me down safely. I'm going to feed 100 Brahmins. And then he said, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya and starts getting down. By the time he's halfway through, he says, you know what, Lord Shiva, I'm almost halfway there. I'll I'll feed 50 Brahmins now. Okay, 50 is done. And just before he's about to step in, he said, you know what, I'll feed one Brahmin. And he said, you know, by the way, I'm Brahmin, so I'll just eat myself. So this is typically how we approach things in this world based on our self-interest and the mindset we usually have when it comes to doing transaction or business with God. Right? When, we, when we have some kind of a puja in our house, let's say, because marriage is going on or some function is going on, we go out to the cloth seller and say, show me the best cloth that you have, the silken one. We get that for ourselves and family and stuff. And then he's, he says, okay, can you show me some cloth for puja also? And he shows the best silken cloth that he has. No, 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 that's for puja. Give me the 10 rupee one. Okay, or maybe the much more cheaper one. So that is the basis we have established for our devotion with God. Okay, which really needs to be looked at in perspective. Okay, which is, first of all, it is transactional. Second, we are not asking for the right thing. Third, because we are so conditioned, we have been doing business with people around, the world around, we end up doing business with God also. Okay. So there's absolutely no basis. And, and then we continue doing the same thing. Same thing. If our wish is fulfilled, God is there. If wish is not fulfilled, who knows who God is there or not on that. Belief is not solidified around it. Then of course, the question comes, what do we need to ask God? Right? And how should we ask God? Let's talk about that as well. So, what is the language God understands? You see, so many languages are there. French is there, German is there, and then English, of course, is there, Chinese, and pretty much so many languages are there. Does it matter, basically, in what language we're asking God? Let's understand this concept a little bit more. Yes, yeah, Sam, you had a question? No, uh, I thought that is a question. No. To be answered. No, no, it's not a question. I'll pose the question and I'll answer myself here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what is the language that God understands? Here is a little girl. See this girl? She would come and pray in front of God every day. Until Panditji said, What do you pray to God? How do you pray to God? Every day she would come, mutter a silent prayer, and go away. And the Panditji, you know, wondered what is what is it that she mutters every day and what kind of a prayer she does. Okay, so she said, I only know ABCD. I say ABCD and tell God you pick the letters, form the word and sentence, whatever you wish as part of your prayer and do it yourself. Okay, make it a do-it-yourself project for God because I only know ABCD. Okay, so the point here is that all God cares for is a prayerful and a selfless heart. Nothing else. No language. Nothing matters. Because he's seated within. When we get into this concept of Paramatma, Brahman and Bhagavan, we will see that God is seated within. All he cares for is our bhav and intention. Nothing else. Whichever language, God is language agnostic. He is the Satchit Anand, right? One part of it is perfect knowledge. Yeah, so it doesn't matter which knowledge, which language you are using. By the way, this girl, he's, he wants... 
he goes to her mother and says mother i need a cat so mother said no you know we know cats how cats are they can make the home very messy said no if god desires then we will get a cat so she goes out and prays to god god give me a cat okay and after 2 minutes there's a cat which flew and you know it flew in from another fence and right in front of him it fell down so now mother has to agree you know it's like some in mean divine intervention happened and the cat is right there in their own backyard in front of her so anyways they took in that cat because looks like her prayer was answered after a few weeks or months i think it came to they came to know that one of their neighbors their cat had climbed up the tree so they were trying to get her down and she was not cooperating so what they did was they tied a rope to the tree where she had climbed they tied the other end to a car and started bending the tree so that they can get the cat down and in that process that you know the one of the end of that rope got loosened and that tree became a catapult and threw the cat in that other cart so point is god can listen to our prayers as long as it is coming with a prayerful heart doesn't mean now i have a prayerful heart i prayed but god did not i mean he knows which prayer to answer and which one to ignore he answers all the prayers some all right i agree some he says no you need to wait sometimes he say no this is poison for you i will not give you even if you demand so it's not like there's a formula we have god knows what is best okay so there are prayers that can get answered as well there are stories we can talk about that so the point here is it's only a prayerful and a selfless heart is what god cares for no language barrier whatsoever nothing okay now the next question comes is okay that's fine and this is how i should be praying what should we ask for should i ask for a son a job you know getting married getting green card all that stuff or there's anything else we we can ask ask to god as well so kennedy right this is a beautiful quote from kennedy he said ask not what the nation can do for you ask what you can do for the nation okay there's a bit of a typo but i hope you got that same thing with god ask not what god can do for you ask what you can do for god okay this is how the 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 trick is in this whole relationship it's in giving one shall receive okay there was a beggar and there was a seth ji had a deal so seth ji said to beggar you give me all that you have and then i'll give you all that i have so if that transaction goes through who is the loser and who is the winner here there's no loser here seth ji seth ji but it is something similar here as well with god he says you become selfless you start giving and you shall get back in return and this is the law of universe so when it comes to asking it, it is said that you make service to god as your goal i'm going to serve you that's all and then what do you ask for bhakti devotion love for god how do you ask for by doing bhakti what do you get in return more bhakti so bhakti is the means bhakti is the end and bhakti is the goal basically so this is how this process unfolds so now you start becoming selfless and gaining entitlement for the highest there's a saying bin mange moti mile mange mile na bhikh so we have been beggars since time immemorial i need this i need that and god says okay give me a break doesn't work that way you will regardless get what you deserve based on your karmic cycles forget about bribing me and forget about making this transactional relationship purify yourself come to me with an eligibility become selfless become better human being and then i shall provide to you what all you need without even you asking for it and this is the trick or the secret of getting what you are hoping for right there is a hindi saying which says tu karta wahi hai jo tu chahta hai aur hota wahi hai jo main chahta hu tu kar wo jo main chahta hu fir hoga wahi jo tu chahta hai and there is another one which says meri chahi na karo main murakh agyan teri chahi mein hai prabhu mera kalyan so what we get what we deserve not what we desire and god being our eternal protector and well wisher will any way provide for what we need and when we start making spirituality our priority guru god why a guru does does the yoga kshem 
yogikshe means he starts providing things that you lack and you need for your spiritual growth he preserves things that you already have and continue to need for your spiritual growth and he destroys things which you have which are not required for your spiritual growth all three will happen automatically so the bottom line is end of the day we just need to work on ourselves keep on making seva to god as our goal and everything else will align automatically not i need this i need that i need a hack to god okay so that somehow i can get what my desire fulfilled all this is a futile exercise it's not going to get anywhere okay because you will anyway get what your prarabdh more than prarabdh what lesson you need so it's a hand picked custom course god has designed for each one of us in every life and until we learn those lessons even in material world they don't let us pass from one standard to another and in spiritual world definitely not so if a lesson is repeating in your life again and again and again that means we are miserably failing in that particular test and we need to pass it with flying colors before god can move us to the next stage or next step so this is how typically it works with that said i'm going to take a quick pause before i move further any questions so far on what we have discussed i know we covered a lot of philosophy and theory around it but any questions so far on what we have spoken about this is why you said that we all act as per our intellect mm -hmm. depending on my samajh my intellect my my mind works i ask for things like the beggar wanted to beg in the rolls royce same way you're saying that we have this uh, unmold sharir and still we are not able to make use of it as we all should is that the case true that's because of ignorance right ved vyas says agyan mevasya mool karanam that means ignorance is the root cause of everything why does it happen because we think ourselves we, we start with ignorance we don't know anything better it's like koop manduk nyay nyay darshan talks about koop manduk koop manduk means the frog in a well it has no conception of an ocean at all so there's another frog which comes in and he says you know what my place where i'm coming from is much bigger like right? when saints come and tell us you know there is golok there is saket lok we we don't have that conception to understand that right so they said how big is it five times more than where i stay he takes a big jump he said no even bigger than that 10 times more 100 times more he said no much much more he said come on you must be kidding because it's his its intellect would take it only that far so of course it starts with the faith that is why spirituality is called a journey of faith you take the word of saints sadhu shastra and guru these wow. three things you take the word and then start realizing and taking that progress or or making that progress around it so right now our intellect is convinced the my self interest or my happiness will be served by getting more of this material world you know i i or my family should be fine and everything should be fine i should get what i need so our intellect is convinced for these things trinkets only and that is why we don't ask for things that we truly need duryodhan did the same before the mahabharat war he asked for what krishna could give because krishna's army was you know just one of the strongest armies maybe the like the naval fleet we have right now of us it was like that army chaturangi sena of lord krishna so he asked for what krishna could give and arjun asked for from krishna for krishna so we are also being a duryodhan only we are asking god for what god can give and that too without any basis we don't even have formed a relationship as yet we'll talk about relationship as well we haven't even formed a relationship with god as yet and we keep on asking okay so this is the key um, i wanted to discuss today and people who are uh, studying gita here or who are who are known can only have this intellect otherwise people who are ignorant are still living the same same field same world so how do they we are fortunate in, in the sense that we have gotten this opportunity to revise this knowledge every day swami ji maharaj ji has graced us so that we can read this knowledge every day and discuss it and contemplate over it not everybody is ready for it as well so we should make the most of it having said that even after knowing the knowledge it will not help because it has to be repeated over and over and over and over again until it becomes your intellect becomes convinced right now it still it, it still not be convinced to hum jante hain mante nahi hai abhi 
जब हम मानना शुरू करेंगे वेन वी ट्रूली स्टार्ट बिलीविंग इन दिस नॉलेज देन द मैजिक विल स्टार्ट है वी काइंड ऑफ यू नो बट नॉट कंप्लीटली देयर एस एड एंड बाय द वे आई आस्ट क्वेश्चन सो आई एम गुड बिल्ड ऑन दैट क्वेश्चन बिफोर वी गेट इन टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ फॉर्म फॉर्मलेस एंड ऑल दो कॉन्सेप्ट I have asked which one do you think is more pleasurable? So you can keep. You don't need to answer me right now. Now, who all love rasgulla here? Anybody who doesn't love rasgulla here? I doubt we all love. I guess. Okay, so you all love rasgulla. That is good. Now I would ask you this question: Which one do you think is more pleasurable? Eating rasgulla, tasting it, or becoming a rasgulla yourself? Yeah. So, think about it. You don't have to answer it. No, how do we taste it? If you bring rasgulla ourselves. <laughs> so yeah, tasting rasgulla or becoming a rasgulla yourself. So that is one. And then second, of course, I had posed this question previously: baby in womb and baby in hand. Which one yeah. you think is more pleasurable? We can talk about this concept. Okay, these are important questions to think about because it is going to help us understand the concepts that I'm going to we are going to introduce in coming sessions. Uh, related to the manifestations of God and putting it in perspective. All right, so think about it. Um, now let's go back. I see one hand. Maybe any question? Tanmay ji, are you there? About today? Raise your hand. Tanmay ji. Yes, Tanmay ji. Tanmay ji, you had raised yeah. your hand. Yeah. Please go ahead, Tanmay ji. Radhe, Radhe. Yes, Radhe, Radhe. Um, my question is in the bhakti mark. So the love is subjective definition. In materialism, in our family surrounding, like बोलते हैं ना कि मुंह खोलो, demand खोलो, पैसे जाते हैं। अपन को ना पैसे से मोह है, ना materialism के relationship से मोह। तो क्या इस definition को थोड़ा सा clear करिए ना कि अगर हम सेवा भी कर रहे हैं, तो हम प्यार मांग रहे हैं भगवान से spiritual love। क्या ये selfish selfish है? No, it's a very noble desire. So where is the problem? You should ask for divine love. right there is no problem in asking for divine love god says i am willing to give you divine love you prepare your vessel it's like you're asking somebody for milk and your vessel is dirty if he puts the milk it will curdle god says i am willing to give you divine love you prepare your vessel clean it i'll give you all that it is said that the milk of tigress can only be held in a gold vessel i don't know if somebody has tried to milk a tigress or not but there is a saying similarly for you to hold divine love you need to have a solid pure vessel antakaran has to be purified when it is ready god will give you everything no problem at all keep my keep thank you nitin ji for it uh, mere ko hamesha yahi lagta tha ki kya love bhi matlab hum jab mang rahe to is it possible to apne aaj clear kar do divine love is basically very noble desire let's see when you ask for seva the divine love will be an automatic consequence of it when do you ask for seva do you want to do seva for somebody whom you don't love and when we love somebody conversely automatically you want to do something for them right so these are all related concepts when we ask for seva of god divine love is our inheritance at that point dai bhak bhakti becomes our dai bhak inheritance like we get inheritance from our father god has to give us that but we need to continue to work on ourselves god says you become good that's all i need from you nothing else that's all we don't have to do jab tap and severe austerities or anything nothing just become good that's all prepare your vessel and i am my divine love is all yours okay hope that uh, helps okay great yes rahul rahul bhai radhe 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 yeah maharaj ji has mentioned the same thing that i mean jab bhi unse mange to sirf darshan aur unki seva seva kiske liye उनकी सेवा करने के लिए तो वहां निष्कामता की बात आ जाएगी तो बस यही है वेरी ट्रू उनकी सेवा या दैट इज द ओनली थिंग वन शुड आस्क फॉर राइट देर इज अर दैट यू नो दैट ब्यूटीफुल सार इन दैट राधे गीत राइट विच वन वॉज दैट भाव निष्काम अनन्य बना दे हरि गुरु हरि गुरु राधे गोविंद राधे भाव निष्काम अनन्य बना दे दैट्स ऑल स्क्रिप्चर्स समड अप इन दिस वन वर्स इफ यू डू सेवा सेल्फलेसली यू डोंट नीड टू डू एनीथिंग एंड लॉट ऑफ ट्रेडिशंस दे फोकस सो मच ऑन निष्काम सेवा दैट्स ऑल यू नीड टू डू निष्काम सेवा इज सो प्यूरिफाइंग नथिंग एल्स इज नीडेड एट दैट पॉइंट बिकॉज़ व्हेन यू डू सेवा लव एंड एवरीथिंग इज ऑलरेडी फ्लोन इन बट बिकॉज़ यू कैन नॉट डू सेवा फॉर समबडी हुम यू डोंट लव एंड व्हेन यू लव समबडी यू फील लाइक सर्विंग देम 
तो सेवा इज द ओनली गोल राइट महाराज इज ब्यूटिफुल भजन इज देर गुरु सेवा ही धर्म हमारो दास न हम श्रुति चा करके ठाकुर युगुल किशोर सो बेसिकली सेवा इज द अल्टीमेट थिंग सेवा में ही है मेवा दैट्स वाई दे से दैट एंड द फ्रूट ऑफ साधना इज ऑल्सो सेवा दैट इज द इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज इफ यू लुक एट इट आर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल जीवे स्वरूप हो नित्य कृष्ण दास दैट इज वर्ट मगर महाप्रभु हेड सेट so when we our constitutional position is that of being a servant of god the sooner we start doing seva the better it is we are making sanskars if we don't make sanskars of seva then finally you will your guru will come and say you know what you have done all this japa tapa and all that is fine now you have to do seva if you want to get divine love then it will be very difficult because our sanskars will if we have not built those ground up it becomes increasingly difficult to do seva and becoming selfless in our acts so that is why whenever we start building those concepts ground up it is even better it is said when you go to learn music the music teacher asks do you know music and if you say yes the fees is double because first he has to make you unlearn what you have learned and then learn similarly on the path of spirituality if your concepts are messed up around this thing uh, selflessness and all then double effort would be needed so better foundationally we build it the right way okay let's hear uh, i see few more hands one more thing yeah. i wanted to add regarding service was i was watching a leela recently on this hanuman jayanti where guru vashisht uh, shri ram ji is guru he said that no seva is small or big you just have to think that you are doing it for your prabhu ram or shyam yeah. whoever your ishta dev is there and then infuse that love that's it no yeah. big or small seva so very good nice what he told in that leela rather than in fact the more menial the seva is the more purifying it is so if you are washing utensils after a langar or after a prasad at temple or otherwise if you are washing utensils if you are helping out with putting shoes in place the more menial seva to do the more uplifting and purifying it is this is how it works it works on your humility and it it's very very purifying that is the concept of seva so only thing that we should ask for god is for his seva and maybe his darshan i want to see you the way you are and right? only with his divine vision he can make us other than we should not be asking god for anything is what god says so he says that approach me you will get divine love when you reject both bhukti and mukti we will got get into that concept when we get into paramatma brahman and bhagwan you have to reject bhukti bhukti we all know bhukti means the material desires i need this i need that house car people person whatever it is bhukti has to be rejected he says i you have to reject mukti or liberate the desire for liberation also then i will give you divine love so desire for liberation is a spiritual desire but it is still selfish desire that is what maharaj is it is still selfish because you are saying dukh nivritti oh god let my pain and misery end that is selfish divine love is oh god i want to serve you okay regardless of how you keep me so it is much superior selfless okay couple of more hands let's take those mina ji radhe 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 everyone uh, so i just want to tell a quick thing here uh, it's not a question i just want to add few points uh, so actually what it's like a kind of analogy so Uh, we might have seen i'm going to be quick so we might have seen a record player in olden days you know when some record has been broken it sings the same song again and broken again record, you know yeah. Mm-hmm. uh yeah so in the same way in our life also actually we don't know what to ask we ask the same thing like a uh, like a parent asks for the kid to get married and once they marry they ask for you know will they get along and they ask for kid and the kid will come and the kid should get a good study and they should get a good placement and again the kid should get married again the cycle actually being in a human being we don't even know what to ask god we are in such kind of ignorance very true we ask the same thing like a for broken record yes huh? for for different rules huh? it's right. like dada ji we do pranam to our dada ji and dada ji has Bas come as a junior in our family will we still do pranam to him so we forget and it's more in the religion the disease hota hai to hum apne budhe parents ko hum kaise dekhenge agar kuch ho na jaye mujhe cancer na ho jaye so jo poochte hai na i keep on asking the same question that is why shankaracharya said punarapi jananam punarapi maranam jatare shayanam beautiful thank you meena ji i think you summed it up really well we keep on asking the interesting thing is we keep on asking it's it is 
for the particular relation that we get form bonding within every life right we ask for our family we ask for our grandparents parents spouse kid and they keep on changing and that same cycle keeps on repeating it's not that you will have the same kid always right abhimanyu when he was killed arjun was wailing so he said i want to see abhimanyu arjun said arjun said to krishna said all right i'll get him but i can't get him in this body the rules are rules right so he got him and he could ex- you know uh, experience abhimanyu there and he said beta he said beta which beta the beta that you are talking about is lying right there his body was lying there and in so many lives i have been father we are to so we keep on in fact god makes us forget otherwise this life will become see we can't even forget what some people told us last week or last year you know we hold those grudges if god would make us remember all the relationships around us life would be terrible right oh my god now this person who's claiming to be my friend was my enemy in my last life and how oh my god my wife you know it used to be my friend's wife and it will be so complicated you can just imagine right so he makes us forget but the point is we keep on repeating the same set of emotions for different people in different lifetimes and that becomes a habit or a conditioning part of our mind which we keep on repeating and that becomes the, the reason for our repeating in this world yes sam ji one second ashutosh ji radhe 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 ashutosh radhe radhe actually i remember two lines but like to say that one mm-hmm. nit seva man shama sham teri na bhukti nahi mukti mangu main na bhukti nahi mukti mangu main thank you thank you sam ji such a beautiful bhajan uh, nit seva mangu that's the only goal for a soul to ask for seva nothing else everything else will fail see it's like this if if you want to one desire could be that okay give me money i am in a lot of poverty and second is say make me billionaire poverty will automatically get eliminated right so when you ask for divine love everything else will follow all the moksha and other things are automatically taken care of it's like it's buy one get one free offer we get so you get divine love moksha will come free with it that is how it works but we get stuck at moksha liberation dukh nivritti so divine love is a higher concept for that we need to be selfless and purified then god says all right now i am your slave but for that we have to prove we are willing to be a slave first then he said i am willing to become your slave all yours yes couple of other hands uh, we have time ji radhe radhe we'll end it on time today uh, no radhe 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 the material is that is wrong in the place pain case prabhu se prabhu ko hi mang lo कहना बहुत आसान है पर दैट इज अल्टीमेटली दैट इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट थिंग्स आई गेस ट्रू इज इजी टू से दैट राधे राधे वेरी ट्रू देयर आर थ्री काइंड्स ऑफ डिवोटीज वेरी ट्रू सैमजी प्रभु से प्रभु को दैट इज द की थिंग दैट दैट इज व्हाट आर बेसिकली महाराज जी स्वामी जी दे कीप ऑन प्रीचिंग अस टेलिंग अस वी नीड टू आस्क गॉड फॉर गॉड ओनली राइट एंड देन व्हेन इट कम्स टू आस्किंग यू नो progressing spiritually there are three kinds of devotees one they use the world uh, to and their goal is world and they use god as a means and the second kind of devotees are their goal is god but they think world is the means and the third kind of devotees are their goal is god and the means is also god because they understand through their self effort they can do only so much so yeah we need to ask god for god and then take his grace to continue to progress thank you for sharing that okay two more hands so our Did today is like on time um i'm having a bit of a stomach bug going on so uh, but i'm glad it worked out all right so we still have 10 more minutes yes rahul uh, i see shashi ji taso hum let's take those radhi radhi niti Uh, Maharaj Ji even made it so simple for us. He was saying that uh, Bhagwat Prapti के लिए कुछ नहीं करना आपको Bhagwat Prapti free में हो जाएगी. If you just believe it that God is sitting within you, you know 
right now you know it but you don't really believe it so the moment you believe it you will never do anything wrong so then god realization is very easy once we believe it very true that is the whole idea of having that uh, belief true belief that god is seated within that practice is where you remember god right and then as as we keep on getting clearer and clearer from inside that realization of god seated within will become stronger and stronger right the mountain lake which does not have any turbulence you can see the bottom of it right now we have so many turbulence in our mind and other things that those layers prevent us from having that realization and we that knowledge keeps on slipping but very good point shashi ji like always you do thank you so much radhi 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 dasu ham ji that anything related to the parrot today or something else radha radha ji thank you radha you said that sanskrit is the uh, rich language dev bhasha ha yeah that that for i am saying a uh, shloka in sanskrit sure माता पिता बंधु सखा विद्याद्रविणम शर्व मम देवदेव राधे 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 वेरी नाइस दासो हम जी ब्यूटिफुल प्रेयर वर्ल्ड and we will challenge that okay who is the true sambandhi and what is the definition of a sambandhi and talk about this concept as well yes uh, rahul and then i see deyashini as well uh, radhe radhe there is a question in the chat by aparna ji she says that i have to do my duty to the fullest in this life but i ask good things for my loved ones so is that incorrect because she is saying that with that sense of duty i ask and i don't ask anything for me but for my loved ones so that is her dilemma god says ananya chintayanto mam yojana paryupasate exclusively love me those loved ones will keep on changing and that is born out of your attachment to them if you think deeply about it you are actually attached to them and that is why you are asking for them and that attachment will make us repeat in this world your loved ones will keep on changing every life it's not the same loved ones every lifetime so you are building a sanskar where whoever is close to you 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 get attached to them and you keep asking which is a noble thing but not perfect instead if you focus on loving god understanding he is a true nati not these they are just the roles in my life temporary roles and everybody have their own destiny it's like two waves they rise up in a in a wave of an ocean and then they separate never to meet again that is how these roles or these loved ones work in our life they are never to be seen again so what's the point of loving your relatives and people when you you can reserve that love for god and see that in perspective that is much more smarter strategy as opposed to getting attached because you don't need too many people who to make you repeat in this world one person is and every lifetime we end up finding that one or two people and we keep repeating how many people do you need to repeat in this world just one and we end up finding that one person okay that is that is a problem but it is a noble desire not asking something for yourself but we have to look at it in perspective if you think deeply it is your attachment which is making you do so and that attachment has to be dovetailed towards god yes dashini uh radhe radhe am i audible yes super audible Okay, I actually I just want to say today, so right. Okay, sure. Is it the time yet? Yep, we can wrap it up with your singing today. Um, usually we do it at ten. Shashi ji, you had a question before we can get into that singing. Okay, okay, sure. Yeah, after this, Deya Shri, you can come ten o'clock. Usually we end the session and then we okay. into the devotional segment okay. for five ten minutes. So we will. 
take Shashi ji's question and yeah, then... Nitin ji, quickly, I want to ask you, when you, you know, hope that your family member becomes a devotee, that's also due to attachment or is just what it is? It is due to attachment only. We want good for them. Uh, why not? Why family member only? Why not the rest of the world as well? Yeah, why? rest of so, the world too. Sure. If you can agnostic about it, then sure. Like people say, right? In kids, it is Bhagavad Swarup only. Kids are Bhagavad Swarup and then they love kids. But then that Bhagavad Swarup is limited to their own kids usually. Right? They don't feel the same for a kid in the street that doesn't belong to them. So if you are equ equanimous around it, you want people to build that. Sure. But you have to really think deeply about it. Is it your attachment to them which is making you feel, you know, they should get into this? Or is it is it the same you feel for all? Because our attachment, our mind plays tricks with us. It comes in different forms, you know, and justifies itself that it is not attachment. I want good for them, which is fine. Um, we all want good for others and even saints want good for us. But there is only so much we can do for each other, right? Uh, that perspective needs to be there. But whatever way we can help them, great. Because in fact, the best thing we can do as parents to our kids or people around us is to uplift them spiritually. So whatever we can do from our end without being attached to that outcome, I, I think it's good. But if we are attached to the outcome, why are they not listening? Why are they not progressing? Or it's so simple and yet they don't spend time. Then there is a problem. That attachment shouldn't be there. Uh, Nitinji, you know, uh, Maharaji says, this is how you can pay the guru debt by giving this knowledge to others. True. And at the same time, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, see these dualities, we have to look at it in perspective. Krishna says that this knowledge doesn't have to be revealed to somebody who's a non-believer. How mm -hmm. do you reconcile both of these? So basically, Maharaj what he says is, yes, that's the only way. But then the person, the patra has to be ready, right? Receptive as well. So we pick based on our experience and but maybe some part of our gut, but uh, when our oxygen mask is not placed perfectly on our own nose, we can't go around and help others. That can be counterproductive as well, right? Okay. So it's more an art than a science. Um, but if you are in a situation where we can facilitate this process for somebody, nothing like it. Okay, got it. Thank you, Nitin Ji. Right, Radhe Radhe. Yes, okay. So I think we are good. So thank you so much, everyone for your enthusiastic participation. Tomorrow we will talk about, you know, the aspects of God, different aspects of God and go really deep into that discussion over the next three sessions. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and I uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We can do the peace prayer uh, once more and then Diashini, you over to you. We can have you sing today. This is a peace prayer for the excruciating pain a lot of people are going through right now. Big tragedy that happened. So let's send out a prayer together for them and then we can wrap it up with the devotional singing. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha Sarve santu niramaya Sarve bhadrani pashyantu Makaschit tuk bhag bhavet Om shanti 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 all right. Over to you, Dayashini, then. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Yes. Uh, this bhajan is, again, one of the Maharaji's bhajan. Sure. It is, Akna Pan Rakna Mere Ghanisha. Mm -hmm. Akna Pan Rakna Mere that means, O oh my Ghanasham, reciprocate my love for you by considering me to be your own. Ghari Ghari Pala Pala Naam Tiharo Rati My tongue is engaged constant, constantly in reciting your name alone. Lali Lali Do De Gar Bani Ho Mare Ki Basna Mere Ghanisham. Please recite.
died in my heart in the form which is affectionately embracing kishori ji with your arms around each other's neck bhav hindo re dari hi ye me jhulav ni ko jhulna mere ghan sha i constantly sing you both gently in my heart which i will have decorated with the waves of surging tender emotions be you pahare hare so bana ko bana lo tu ke apna mere ghan sha presenting you with a necklace of selfless tears shed in extreme separation from you i will make you mine forever kaise ho kare kripalo prabhu apno pura wo man sapna mere Shri Kripalu Ji Maharaj says, "Make me yours somehow or the other, thus fulfilling my long cherished desire." Apna apna rakna mere ghan sha. Apna apna rakna. thank you actually the lines are repeating but i have just sang it once okay thank you we did it well the ashini and it's a very beautiful bhajan apna pan rakhna mere ghan sham and that is how you make i think it is very relevant to the topic we discussed today as well right what is the basis of relationship that we are forming with god it is like asking for a lift on a highway when we don't even have an acquaintance with the other person so building that relationship is the key and when you build a relationship that relationship starts getting sweeter and sweeter over time beautiful bhajan vyashini loved it thank you for doing that so with that we anybody else wanted to say anything okay good so tomorrow we'll talk about uh, we'll continue on this discussion we'll go into deeper philosophy uh, the concept of god that we're talking about but thank you again everybody for your wonderful participation and uh, have a safe rest of your day and uh, good rest of your evening as well radhe radhe from my side radhe radhe take care see you tomorrow thank you see you tomorrow bye